Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Vortex Bench with Boyan. I'm the Boyan in question and I hope to answer some of your questions that pertain to Orthodox theology and practice from my own knowledge and experience. And today's question comes from Gregory. His question is, uh, can we pray for Satan? Uh, I will answer this question, but first I need to quote Mark Twain who said, who in the 18 years had uh, had, had the common decency to pray for the one sinner who needed it the most. And, you know, whenever I say this quote, I go like, ah, because one of the biggest pet peeves I have when it comes to atheists is that when they think of a criticism of Christians, Christian practice, Christian teaching, Christian, Christian dogma, they very often assume that they're the first one who thought of it, you know, that these are some issues and questions that uh, no one had, th yeah, that Christians haven't faced before. Uh, like, uh, I was thinking about Buddhism and I was like, yeah, but B Buddhists are like, uh, they're fighting desire, but uh, don't they desire fighting desire? And then I, I simply went, well, yeah, that's probably a question that they have dealt with. And surprise, surprise, they did. Um, and this quote by Mark Twain is one such, you know, uh, one such uh, quote where he probably really taught himself smart that, uh, that yeah, uh, your Christians aren't so nice and well because you, well, yeah, you did not pray for Satan. Uh, Saint uh, Anthony the Great prayed for Satan, Saint Paisios uh, the Athenite prayed for Satan. I, he wasn't really contemporary with uh, Mark Twain, but there were saints who prayed for Satan. Um, so, to answer your question, yes, technically you can. I mean, your question specifically was, can you pray for his salvation? Yes and no. Technically, yes, you can, but it is a useless vain prayer, and why would you do it? Um, people who have been following me for some time, uh, for some time, know that I dislike what I call uh, warlock exorcisms. You know, that is when we try to pry some information from uh, from demons during exorcisms. And uh, one of my friends, his guy Incognito on Twitter, I want to use his real name, made a great parody of it. Uh, like, uh, what, what do you hate? Traditional Latin Mass and Virgin Mary. What do you, what do you love? Uh, daily Office Revision of 1962. <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure, yeah. However, there is this one, you know, quote from an exorcism, and I will simply quote it because it rings true. I can't remember where I saw it. Uh, it's a Catholic priest. It's a Catholic, Catholic exorcism. But it simply rang true enough that uh, I think it warrants sh sharing, uh, simply, you know, for something to think about. What is the major difference between uh, us on one side and angels on the other? And, you know, demons basically being fallen angels. So there was this exorcism and the priest started questioning uh, the, the demon. Uh, you fell from God? Yes. Was it by your, your own will? Yes. It was your own choice? Yes. Do you think it was a right choice to do? No. Would you do it again? Yes. And this illustrates rather well the major difference between us humans and angels, because us, us humans, we're really plastic you know you know the the thing the plasticity of the brain well we are all all like that our bodies our minds our souls everything um we can become the worst demon one day and the and basically become an angel the next and then revert to the, to the demon and uh, you know we have these oscillations however with actual demons and angels that is not so uh when an angel decides to follow God and remain an angel, that's that he makes that choice with his entire being. There, there are no things 
like regret, remorse. Uh, they might have it in one way when it comes to demons, but uh, th those aren't the states that prompt them in any sort of capacity to repentance. Unlike, and these states can move us to repentance. Um, so uh, demons also, when they decide to go against God and thus become demons, again, this is a completely willing and informed choice. The closest thing we have such uh, to such a choice as humans is basically being asked if we are Christians at a gunpoint. And you know that what you will say will determine your fate. That is the closest thing we actually have uh, to those choices that angels make and thus remain angels or become demons. Um, and that is why praying for uh, for them is useless. I actually prayed for demons that tempt me that the Lord does not account their temptation of me as a sin in the sense of, you know, to ease them their judgment, but not in the sense of like save them because again I I understand that this is uh, this, uh, this is um, useless. And I'm going to share actually three stories uh, from the holy tradition about the supposed repentance of demons. The first one, uh, this this one's anonymous, I've read it ages ago. So this um, guy was praying and uh, suddenly a demon appears and starts telling him to stop praying. But the guy opts, you know, instead of like asking the Lord to rebuke the demon, he starts, he starts giving a sermon to the demon, how God is good, how he wills everyone to repent, demons included, how he's willing to, uh, you know, forgive even the demon and the demon is sort of like listening listening and he says like but what do i need to do to be saved and the man says simply say to lord uh forgive me all of my sins and the demon says lord please forgive me all of my sins and he becomes this beautiful angel of light <laughs> you know where this is going you know and uh, the angel asks him thank you so much for liberating me from my curse. Uh, I would wish to become your guardian angel. And the guy uh, and the guy is like, there is no conceivable way this can possibly fail. And he goes, yes, I accept. And he becomes possessed immediately. He tries jumping out of the window. However, people in the next room heard the commotion, saved him at the last moment. Yeah. Uh, the next story is from and uh, is from um, from the life of Saint Pisius, I believe. Uh, it could be Saint Siloan. Um He also prayed for uh, for Satan or demons or whatever. And during one such prayer, he saw a, uh, a dog skull leering at him and uh, grinning and everything. And from that sort of vision, he learned that uh, such prayer is useless and the fi uh, the final story and this one's this one's a sort of long one but i'll condense it and the most telling one is from the life of saint anthony so this haggard old man comes to his you know cell uh knock uh, knocks uh, tells saint anthony father please uh pray to god uh, that uh, i will be forgiven and the saint tells him come tomorrow in the morning and I'll tell you what the Lord has revealed to me about you. And the old man leaves. So the entire night St. Anthony prays for this man and he receives a visitation by an angel and the angel tells him that old man that visited you was actually a demon. Uh, however, uh, he will return tomorrow to inquire how he should be saved and uh, you should tell him that he should stand facing east for a century and uh, keep repeating, Lord, forgive my remaining malice, and to repeat it over and over again. And uh, the St. Anthony, you know, waits for the morning, the haggard old man comes, and uh, St. Anthony says, I know what you are. And uh, the demon says, fine, what did the Lord has revealed to you about me? And uh, he says, well, he told me that you should face the East for a century to, to keep saying, Lord, please forgive me uh, my remaining malice and you will be restored to the angelic ranks. 
and immediately this facade of a haggard old man melts and he sh shows himself in his total, you know, depravity and evil and malice. And he says, me, <laughs> ask the Lord to forgive me who have been worshipped by your kind for so long. Fetch ends and kill leaves. So we can see from these examples and from the total lack of demons repenting from the holy tradition and many cases where they either show that they won't repent or actually harm people whom they dupe into believing that they actually repented we can see that this is a um, you know foolhardy endeavor uh, your desire is very sweet very nice but very misplaced so don't do it <laughs> bye